the Boston Marathon blasts over a day since the twin blast killed three people and injured over 180. The FBI working hard to look for those responsible. Well, the CNN reports that a Taliban or an Al-Qaeda hand has been ruled out and the FBI made a public announcement seeking help into any clues that people could provide. Law enforcement officials say they have recovered forensic evidence that suggests the two explosive devices may have been inside heavy black nylon bags. Officials also said that a pressure cooker stuffed with gunpowder and shrapnel may have caused at least one of those blasts. Among items partially recovered are pieces of black nylon, which could be from a backpack, and what to be, appear to be fragments of BBs and nails possibly contained in a pressure cooker device. At this time, there are no claims of responsibility. The range of suspects and motives remains wide open. We are asking anyone who may have heard someone speak about the marathon or the date of April 15th in any way that indicated that he or she may target the event to call us. The FBI is saying fragments of a pressure cooker were found at the scene, as well as shreds of what might be black nylon bags. That plus new, that new photo that we showed you a minute ago that might, and I repeat, just might, show a bag at the site of the first bomb blast. Drew Griffin and John King are, are with me here tonight, each working their sources, as they have been over the last uh, 24 hours. John, what, what are you hearing the latest on this investigation? Uh, just got some information from a Boston law enforcement source that says, in addition to the pressure cooker, they say it's just undeniable. They have a twisted top of a pressure cooker. They believe it's about six liter capacity. They believe it's two identical devices or very similar devices, but I'm also told a partial circuit board was recovered in the same area among the debris that also has been sent to Quantico. Uh, the suspicion, and they need to send this down to confirm it, but the suspicion is it was some part of the circuit board was used as part of the detonation. And now this all goes off to Quantico. Uh, you, we go through this after airplane crashes. They essentially try to take every piece they can get, assemble it back together, try to recreate the bomb. What they're hoping, Anderson, can they find fingerprints? Can they find any kind of DNA, something from the backpack? And if you can't get personal identification items like that look for serial numbers brand names at least try to figure out where was the pressure cooker where might the bag have been bought and then you try to go from there and try to figure out who might have bought it meanwhile tributes continue to pour in for the victims the candlelight vigil is on in boston and the most heartbreaking of all those stories is that of martin richard the eight-year-old who was killed while watching his father run at the marathon pictures of him like uh, uh, several of them that we've been seeing have been circulating all over social media and tv channels his mother in fact has had to undergo brain surgery while his sister lost her leg nearly 90 others are still being treated in hospitals 13 people had to go and under amputations. And President Obama will be in Boston on Thursday to attend an interfaith service. CNN Zain Usher is joining us now from Boston with the latest on investigations. We can now put names and faces to two of those killed in the Boston bombings. Crystal Campbell of Massachusetts. She had a how to go. She was always smiling from good news for a better daughter an eight-year-old Martin Richard who's seen in a Facebook photo holding a sign that reads no more hurting people peace the blast injured scores more who are just beginning the long road to recovery there are still many of these patients who still need operations President Obama condemned the attacks this was a heinous and cowardly act and given what we now know about what took place, the FBI is investigating it as an act of terrorism. Authorities are asking for photos and videos taken around the time of the attacks for clues. Our mission is clear, to bring to justice those responsible for the marathon bombing. The American public wants answers. We're now hearing a bit more about the explosive devices that were used in these attacks. One of them hidden inside a pressure cooker in a backpack. Of course, this investigation is still ongoing. Reporting in Boston, I'm Zane Asher. Well, we've also been trying to get you Indian voices from Boston. And here's student Shilpa Gupta talking about how the city's calm was shattered by the blasts. Boston is a very peaceful city. It's with students and young professionals. It's a vibrant city with lots of sports and festivals and activities going on. But it's also peaceful and friendly. Never, never such things going on. Life goes on as it is, but I'm definitely sad about what happened and it just makes, it kind of brought the realization of no one's immune. It is the day after and CNN IBN's Urmi Sahani is now joining us from Boston with the latest. 
I'm currently trying to go through various newspapers of the city trying to get a hang of where it stands after these attacks. Uh, to say the least, the coverage is awesome. It has covered everything from the first responders to the reactions of people who were there to human interest stories that will warm your heart. Um, I'm right now reading the New York Post and uh, this, while it talks about the Saudi Arabian national that has been detained to question, um, I think just about footsteps from here uh, in a hospital, a very heavily guarded hospital, uh, to the responders who were there and they approached the situation, how prepared can you really be to uh, go into a situation like this in a city where nothing really ever happens?